Hey guys, this is Max Steinberg. I am a daily fantasy professional and a partner at Safer Sim. And this video is going to be all about single entry tournaments. Um, single entry tournaments can be some of the most profitable tournaments in daily fantasy, but a lot of players approach these in a strange way that I don't think is right. And I think Safer Sim actually has a platform and tools and our lineup builder is actually really, really well equipped to making great single entry tournament lineups. So let's just talk about single entry for a sec. So these are tournaments that limit players to only one entry. So basically there's a lot of pros that in the, a tournament like the Millionaire Maker would be entering 150 times and doing the full entries and you have to play against a lot of their lineups. But in these tournaments, each pro is only limited to one lineup. Each player is only limited to one lineup. And this makes the tournament a lot, lot easier because you, there aren't any, in this tournament like the Fair Catch, for example, there's 20,000 entries and there probably aren't even 10,000 daily fantasy pros in the world, especially not pros you need to worry about if you're using a tool like SaberSim. So these tournaments are pretty profitable. You can win good amount of money, $12 and $20,000 is nothing to sniff at. And I think a lot of people approach these really in the wrong way. And I think there's kind of two ways people usually approach these. Is A, they just make a lineup by hand, right? And that gives you a lot of control, right? You can pick your favorite players and make the quote unquote perfect lineup. And that's all nice. You can be Tyler Lockett, Adam Thielen, blah, blah, like get all the players that you want. Great. However, what ends up happening is you aren't, make it building the best lineups that have the game stacks you want, that take advantage of correlation, that take into account upside. A lot of people are just making how to make lineup or using their cash game lineup, which the fact of the matter is, is these are still tournaments. And while the structure is different, they're not as top heavy, they're still top heavy. And that means that optimal lineup construction to win the GPP is going to be really, really, really useful. So. SaberSim is built really well to make a GPP lineup. And the reason that is, is everything we do is built on our simulator, which simulates every game thousands of times and gives us a lot of great data that you can see here. You can see we get range of outcomes for players. We get players' correlations to each other, players' correlations to each other on the other teams. And we end up using this data in our lineup builder in order to construct the best GPP lineups you can make. And while this is good for making, really good for making 20, 50, or 150 lineups really well, it's also made it good for just making one lineup really well. So let's just go over some of the aspects of lineup builder, right? So a lot of lineup optimizers, these outdated optimizers you'll see out there, they optimize on average projection. They say, okay, on average, Patrick Bones is supposed to score 26 points. Um, Tyreek Hill is supposed to score 19. Let's build a lineup that's going to give you the highest average projection. And how they try to take into account correlation and ownership faded upside is they have you set a lot of rules, right? They say, okay, group these players together. Don't play all these high-end players in the same lineup. And you end up having to waste a ton of time trying to make sure you don't have reverse correlated players, you have a lot of correlation, you have game stacks, you have all the good stuff that makes a good GPP lineup. And even then it's not gonna be optimal. So our approach is way different. We leverage our simulation data, right? And we then just let you decide how much you want to value these things that help you win a GPP. And as we all know, the, how you win is get a correlated lineup that fades ownership in the right way, and has high upside. And that's what all these sliders do, right? So correlation, this is considering, this is basically how much you want our lineup builder to consider these correlations that I showed you before that we get from simulating all the games, right? So if correlation is set to high, that's gonna mean you're gonna get a lot of stacks, you're gonna get a lot of game stacks, which you'll actually see in these lineups in a bit. So we wanna set correlation. If we wanna make a good GVP lineup, you wanna set correlation to high. And again, like, we're, if we're building lineups for a tournament like the Millionaire Maker, right, where it's like a large, a large field GVP, 
we're going to want all these things pretty high. We want high correlation. We want high upside. We want to fade ownership. And if we're doing cash games, right, we're going to want reverse correlation. We don't really care about ownership. We just want the highest average projection because we just want to eke over 50% of the field or win a head-to-head, right? But these tournaments are kind of in between those two things, right? They're still GPPs. They're not massively top heavy ones with 33% of the prize pool in first place, but they still need, you're still going to make the most money making lineups that do all these things that we consider if we're entering a massive bill GPP, right? So we want to consider correlation a lot. We want to consider ownership fade, at least some. And then we want to consider this thing called smart diversity, which is basically our way of using simulation data to take into account upside by actually taking what is happening in the simulations, some buckets of simulations, to account for what could be some real world outcomes that could happen on a given weekend. And smart diversity is kind of hard to explain, but I think it's best explained actually after we make a build, because you'll see exactly how our builder works and how it's different than normal lineup optimizer, right? So we're building our lineups right now, and we're going to see all our lineups being built on this right-hand corner. It's going to show a visual of our, all our lineups, right? And what you would normally see in a lineup optimizer and what lineup optimizers do is they say, okay, they, they try to give you the best lineup based on the highest average score. And that's what we call Proj score, right? So you add up their average projection of each player and that's the score you get. And there we go. You have the highest projection score for, the, for that lineup. But you don't want to build your lineups maximizing for average score. You want to maximize for correlation, upside, and ownership fade. And that's where Sabre score comes in. So Sabre score quantifies all those things. And the reason that Sabre score is higher than it is has to do actually, or higher than Proj score, has to actually do with smart diversity. Because what smart diversity does is it takes a couple simulations from every game and looks at the actual outcomes from those two, three, or even one simulations that it looks at. And if the average ending projection or average score of that player in those little simulations becomes really high, then the lineup builder is gonna favor those players and actually just treat the average score from those few simulations as their average score instead of just taking what their average would be over thousands, thousands of lineups. And what ends up happening is you actually get what a true range of outcomes for an actual player is and what they could actually have and how much upside they could actually have. So in this lineup, my guess is Houston, Kansas City might go into overtime. It begins a huge shootout. And as you can see, this is just a massive Chiefs Houston game stack. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, this is a high over under. Both are teams that pass quite a bit, are fast-paced teams. So this lineup is legitimately the best lineup in a situation where Houston, Kansas City is in game stack, and maybe other games don't quite go up to snuff, and there's not really actually a better player in another, uh, in another game, right? And so what this ends up doing is gives us basically, you know, some lineups given a certain range of outcomes. So... And as you can see, if you actually look at projection score, there, it's not ordered in the way you'd think. You know, sometimes this is the third best lineup. The projection score is really low, but the Saber score is the third best score. And that's because this lineup, although the average score is low on a whole, can have some pretty upside, high upside games. And when I'm making a single entry lineup and I'm just making one lineup for a given slate, which is something I might do on just a four game slate like this one, what I like to do is just look through these lineups and just use my intuition, use my gut and say, does this make sense on top of what Sabre is already giving me? And, you know, they're sort of giving me some choices here, right? There's not that huge of a difference in terms of Sabre score from these top three lineups. So I really can choose or top four lineups. So I can really go wherever I want with it, right? And so this one is interesting too. I think, you know, this Jimmy Garoppolo one probably is going to be pretty contrarian. We get some high upside running backs here. I think that's certainly um, an interesting play. We're just punting at the tight end and 
and defense position. We can go up here with just the Kansas City Houston onslaught. We can temper that Kansas City Houston onslaught a little bit and uh, throw in some David Moore at wide receiver. Or we can go a different route with that Houston Kansas City onslaught and use Deshaun Watson at QB instead, right? And so there's different ways we can go. And I think Saber Sim is really great for mass multi-entry, obviously, because we've just built 150 lineups and they're using that correlation. It's taking into account upside and we're getting a great balance of players, right? But it's also helpful for the single entry because it gives us some very good lineups that are based on some real outcomes that can actually happen in a given weekend. And builds us the best lineups given those outcomes. And so when I make single entry lineups, what I usually do is adjust some players up and down to who I like, maybe take a stand in some way. And then I just let the builder do its work and then choose from one of the top five or so lineups and use my gut and intuition to see what I like the best. So if you're doing single entry and you're thinking, okay, how do I use SaberSim to make the best single entry lineup it's going to be the same process you're going to do as mass multi-entry but you can also use your gut and intuition to sort of decipher from this top five lineups because they're they are going to be pretty close together right so i really hope you enjoy this video i think single entry really is a profitable way to play tournaments it's what they're one of the most profitable tournaments and using a cash lineup or making a hand line made lineup is not going to be as good as using SaberSim and getting that high upside game stack that SaberSim is going to really create for you. And I think that's really important to consider when you're making single entry and not just hand make or use your cash lineup, because that's not going to be as profitable as doing something that Saber gives you that really gives you those best lineups for GPPs, even when they're not as top heavy as let's say the Millionaire Maker. Um, so we are offering a free three-day trial. So for anyone, if you tried us before, you're welcome to try us again. And that's completely free. Try us out. Try the lineup builder. Look at our projections. If you like it, you know, if you'd like it, you can subscribe. If you don't, you don't. And it's totally fine. I, I really recommend you trying us out because this lineup builder really is really cool. It's really fast and it's really easy. So um, good luck this weekend with your NFL lineups and good luck in DFS. And thanks for watching.